having a humble heart. So I do think that 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 is a connection. That's maybe something I need to add to that sheet. I think that's really good. Um, and some other things came up for me while you were telling your story. In Chinese medicine, we talk a lot about the liver hold, that holds anger as opposed to the heart. But the liver also feeds the heart. So it kind of sends blood to the heart. So um, when we experience that anger, sometimes, you know, people talk about you can have a heart attack, right? When you're so angry, because that's how much our anger can affect our heart. And our anger increases our blood pressure, and that's hard on our heart. So yeah, so there's a lot, a lot to be explored there as well. And then it also kind of reminded me um, when you were talking about the humble heart is that the heart also represents the soul in um, the yoga tradition. So it is said that in the heart, not our physical heart, but we talk about our heart space is said to be kind of where spirit resides, where the soul resides. And it's said to be this kind of truest, most purest aspect of ourself. And the word for the heart chakra is anahata. And anahata means unstruck. So it's like this place in us that it maybe Holly had touched into that kind of pure aspect of the self in order to really be able to find that resolution. Um, it's the place before we were hurt. You know, it's the place of who we are before all those hurts were put upon us in our lives. So when we tap into that heart space, it really is tapping into that truest aspect of the self. And in the chakra tradition, so far, some of you have been to the other chakra workshops, we've done um, the root chakra, the second chakra, and the third chakra, which is solar plexus. They're all the lower chakras, the heart's in the middle. And then the next three would be our throat, our third eye, and the crown of the head. So the heart is considered the gateway between our lower chakras and our upper chakras. The lower chakras are said to be more related to our earthly experience. So they're like the heavier elements, earth, water, fire, more tangible. And then the upper chakras are more associated with our spiritual nature. So it's our throat chakra is associated with air, space, and light. Um, and they connect us to their, these upper chakras are said to connect us to it's kind of more of our spiritual nature and our hearts, the gateway between those two things. And then we have this sort of, um, almost like that battle between the head and the heart sometimes, right? So our, our heart and our throat chakras can kind of get a little gunked up as we try to communicate between these two realms, between the earthly and the more ethereal. So we'll talk about those more when we get to the upper chakras. But I thought I'd mention that, that the heart is considered that um, midpoint really between the, the seven chakras. Okay, any other questions before we get started? Any other thoughts? Thank you guys for sharing. I always think it's more meaningful when everyone shares a little bit. So we're gonna start, we'll start on our backs in a little breath practice in a moment. And then we're gonna get up and do a little acupressure work for the heart area and the lung area. And then we'll move into some restoratives after that. So make sure you've got your pillows and all those good things. And then I will, I'm gonna mute everybody. I'll meet you on your mat, okay? Okay. And can everyone see me big? Can you guys make it full screen? Yeah, okay. All right, so give me one second here. I just wanna grab my notes back. So we're gonna come into any supported position that you might like. So I'm gonna suggest just a gentle heart opener here to begin with. So you're gonna take, if you have a blanket of some kind or maybe a narrow pillow, and I've made that blanket into like a trifold. So it's like one third of the size. And if you don't have that, you could maybe take a, a bed pillow, fold it in half to make it about that size. And then depending on your body, you might also need a pillow for your head. But you're welcome to take any other position for this um, first breath practice. Doesn't, it's not crucial. So you're gonna put that blanket if you're using it under the back of your heart, and then maybe a pillow under your head. If you feel like you need it, 
You maybe want to put another pillow or a blanket under your knees to give your lower back a little bit of uh, relief so that there's just this gentle lifting of the heart space. And I always find that when I have that little lift, it just feels more spacious, more open in the heart. So I'm gonna be staying seated, but you guys go ahead and get settled there. And of course, if you wanted to play the playlist, you're muted, you can start that at any time you like. All right. So initially, we're just going to start to settle, being aware of the back of the heart, being aware of the front of the heart. So often throughout our day, our heart is in a more collapsed position when our shoulders are rounded. Our spine is a little uh, rounded over maybe our computer desk or kind of slumped in our seat if we're watching uh, TV or something. So a good part of our time, our heart is not lifted. It's not necessarily feeling open or expansive. And energetically, this can lead to a more depressed state. So when we slump our shoulders, we collapse our posture, we sort of give in to gravity, and we might feel a little heavier. We might feel a little darker, a little more depressed. So if you are not on the full blanket, just kind of tuck your shoulder blades in so you feel more open and spacious in the chest. And then starting to observe your breath. So the heart is kind of nestled in between our lungs and below that, the diaphragm. So the heart's sort of nestled in between all of that. And as we breathe, the heart is getting a little bit of massage. As you inhale, be aware of the diaphragm and notice that it moves down and it makes space for the breath to come into our lungs. And as we exhale, the diaphragm gently moves back up to help that air come back out. So just observing that pattern for a few breath cycles. And then surrounding our heart is this sac of fascia called the pericardium. And that is really a means of holding our heart in place and also protecting the heart. So as we're breathing in and breathing out and the diaphragm's moving up and down, the diaphragm is connected to that sac by way of our fascia. And as you're inhaling, it's pulling that pericardium downward and it's sort of making more space in the heart. And then as you exhale that diaphragm drawing back up and then we get a little bit more compression in the heart. So just see if you can feel and sense into that. And get really subtle in your awareness of your heart space. So some of the things that I've been reading lately also are saying that those of us that are more in tune with our heart, and that can maybe even sense our heartbeat, uh, we're a little better at decision making, which I thought was really interesting. So if we're not kind of tuned into our heart, how do we know what's right for us? And that's the way I interpreted that little bit of information. If we're not aware of our heart. Kind of our heart can guide us and lead our way. And so it might be more challenging to make decisions if we're not tapped in to that inner knowing of the heart space. So there's a lot of, let's say, intuition not only in our brain, but in our heart and in our gut as well. So we're gonna take just a couple more moments, just continuing to breathe, continuing to observe the movement of the diaphragm, the massage of the heart. And starting to allow that breath to be really, really soft and subtle.
Let's take three more cycles of breath here. Just noticing the effect of a little breath practice, a little heart awareness practice, how that feels for you in this moment. Okay, so after that third breath, go ahead, take a full body stretch. And we're reaching out through the arms, through the legs. And you'll still maybe, if you have that blanket, feel it in the back of the heart. And then let's go ahead and reach through right arm, right leg, and then left arm, left leg. Most of you guys have done this with me before, like the up slip, down slip. And we're getting a little bit of kind of massaging of the tissue of the back of the heart. We're gonna focus both in the front and the back tonight. Some say that the back of the heart is where we store all of those heartaches, kind of in our past, in our back. All right, take your arms out to a T. Bring your feet apart as wide as your mat. If you're on that blanket, stay on it and windshield wiper your legs side to side. Again, just feeling that kind of gentle massage into the back of your heart. All right, and then next time your knees come over to the right, you're gonna roll all the way over to that right side. And let's go ahead and come on up into a seated posture. And you might wanna sit up on a cushion or a blanket. We're gonna be sitting for a little bit. All right, they're so gonna bring the hands to the tops of the shoulders here. And we're gonna just rotate those elbows around. And this is bringing a lot of circulation into the area of the heart as we roll out the shoulders. So shoulders, arms, hands, also considered part of heart chakra. As we think about it, the arms and shoulders and hands are sort of growing out of the heart space. Now just reverse though the other way. And of course, you know, we show our affection, our love with our arms, our hands, right? Our, we hug each other, we touch each other, all those things. All right, go ahead, release and take the arms, stretch them out wide, and really find an expansive sense across the heart space. And then give yourself a big hug, put your right arm on the top. And then kind of reach back and grab your shoulder blades and pull those shoulder blades apart from each other. So you feel like you're opening the back of the heart. And then drop your chin towards your chest a bit and breathe into the back of the heart. You get a sense of your rib cage expanding in your back body. Now you could stay here or come into a forward fold. And as you come into a forward fold, you're gonna feel that tissue of the back spread a bit more. You could even pull with your hands, tuck your chin. And then again, take a couple of breaths into your back of your heart. Just really feel that tissue opening. On your next inhale, let's go ahead, come all the way up and we're just gonna switch the arms. So go out wide, big expansiveness of the arms and then left arm on top. Reach back at a good handful, pull your shoulder blades apart from each other on your back. Sit up tall, tuck your chin down and breathe into the back of the heart. You could stay right there or come into that forward fold. Keep kind of pulling with your hands, opening the back of the heart.
On your next inhale, let's go ahead, slowly release, reach those arms out wide once again, and then bring your hands behind you onto the ground. Push down, lift your chest, now open the front of the heart, really open the collarbones, lift the heart up toward the sky. And then slowly release, place both hands on the center of your heart and start to pull the flesh downward in the front of your chest. Take your chin and lift it up, tip your head back, really opening up the heart space as well as the throat. So there's the connection there between our throat chakra and our heart chakra through that fascial system. Good, slowly release, bring your hands over onto the right side of your chest, pull that flesh down, drop your head over to the left. Again, we're feeling that in through the throat, in through the connection to the heart, and now gently tip your head forward and back, but you're still angling it over to the side. And notice as you kind of tip your head, it pulls on the tissue of the heart. So when we're stressed, that pericardium is contracting, the fascia around the heart is contracting, our chest muscles can tighten up. We always have this physiological reaction to stress, especially if it's involving anything that might break our heart. And now release and go to the other side, hands on the opposite side of your chest, Pull down with your hands, drop your head to the right, and then tipping your head forward and back. Good, slowly release, come back to center. Maybe just move that head around a little bit. We're gonna move into the acupressure sequence. So for some of these, you might wanna use oils. The first one, um, you're gonna be on the inside of your arm bone. So if you wanna put some oil on your hands, you can, you can massage it in here. So the first acupressure point is on the lung meridian. So lung is also part of our heart chakra. So find your arm bone, like the kind of the deltoid area and go right inside the arm bone into the little depression. And we're gonna press into these two points with your fingers. And it doesn't have to be exact because you're gonna use all those fingers. And we're gonna just close our eyes and we're gonna breathe here for about one minute. So the lung point here, this is the first lung point in the meridian system. This one is said to help us connect to spirit. Also helps us let go of expectation and be okay with what is. So take a couple more breaths there. And you might find some of these points feel a little tender. You might even massage them a little bit. When there's tenderness, sometimes there's a bit of stagnant energy, especially if we tend to roll our arm bones forward. Let's hold there two more breaths. As you breathe in and out, really sense and feel into that heart space, the rib cage, the cage of the heart. And now very slowly peel your fingers away and let those hands come down. And just notice the little residue of sensation after you let the points go. Okay, next one is center of the heart. So kind of find your chest line, go right to the center and really press in. So you gotta get like kind of deep in there. There's a little indentation right in the center of your breastbone. And that's what we're looking for. It might be tender in there. We often get tightness in here. I've had a lot of private clients have like costochondritis. They get really tight into the breastbone area. We're gonna press there, hold for a few breaths. And this one is considered a center for imparting very much peace and calm, relieves nervousness and emotional imbalance. It's also good for grief. 
and for connecting to our true self, which are the yogis say reside in the heart space. Couple more breaths there, might be tender in that spot as well. One more breath cycle here. And then slowly release the point, let the hands rest down and feel and sense into your heart space. Okay, the next one, we're gonna go back to that same point, but now go to the side about one inch on either side. So it's kind of right in the breast tissue and you're gonna press into there. That's a really tender spot for me. So press into those spots, lift your chest. This is actually on the kidney meridian, um, but it says to open one to feeling valuable and empowered. So it's like that sense of self-respect, which also is relating to our heart space. So breathing here, let's take about three, four more breaths. We're going to do one more point after this. All right, very slowly releasing those points. Feel that residue of the acupressure point. By the way, this, these are coming from a book called Acupressure, no, Aromatherapy and Acupressure Massage. So it's a really cool book. You can like look up different ailments like depression or heartburn and other things, and they'll tell you what points to use. Pretty cool. Okay, last one is on the heart meridian, and it's on your wrist. So you're going to find your pinky edge of your wrist. So slide from the pinky down, and you're going to go over a little bump before the second bump. So there's a little indentation before that little round bump on your wrist. That's where you're gonna press. So you go over one little bump and it's in between the two bumps. Okay, so you can hold that with your thumb and then kind of put your hand right over your heart if that works for you. If that doesn't work, you can pick a different position and we're gonna hold here. We're gonna do each hand for a few breaths. Nice soft breath into the belly. Heart seven, this is the heart seven point is said to heal a broken heart and open us to joy. So the heart's not only associated with things like sadness, grief, heartache. Of course we have love, self-compassion, so much with the heart center, but also with passion, right? We talk about having a passionate heart, a joyful heart. So we can have all the positive good emotions with the heart as well. Okay, slowly release that. And then we're gonna find the other side. So down from your pinky, feel the first bump. And then before that second bigger bump, you're gonna press into there with your thumb and hand over your heart. Soft breath. Heart space also associated with courage. So the word cur is a French word that also means heart. That's where we get that, uh, it's the root of courage. One more breath cycle here. All right, slowly release, let the hands come down. Again, just feel that residue on your wrist. Feel the whole heart space. Take a couple more breaths. I love these acupressure points. They're just, it's such a simple technique, but really effective. Okay, so we're gonna make our way now onto all fours. Just do a couple cat cows, just to move a little energy. It'll take about two or three more minutes and then we're gonna come into some restoratives. So tabletop position, really good um, 
practice for moving it around the spine, the front of the heart, back of the heart. So when you're ready, take an inhale and exhale, rounding into your spine. Spread those shoulder blades apart on your back. Open the back of the heart. And then as you inhale at the front of the heart, lift, shoulder blades can squeeze towards each other a bit. And then shoulder blades move apart as you exhale. So again, stimulating the area of the front and back of the heart. Let's do three more. Last one. After your exhale, go ahead and come into neutral tabletop. And we're going to come into a pose called melting heart. So melting heart, we're going to try and keep our hips over our knees, but we're going to walk our arms forward. So it's almost like child's pose, but child's pose, our hips go back. Melting heart, our hips stay up. Slide your hands forward and let your head come to the ground. Now, if this is hard on your shoulders, stack your hands under your forehead, but do let your heart melt down toward the ground. You wanna feel like your upper spine, the back of your heart is melting into your body. So it becomes really passive in the upper body, but if the shoulders kind of feel a little sore, What's helpful is to press the arm bones a bit into the ground, and that'll help just engage a little muscle so we don't hyperextend too much. So go ahead, take three more breaths if you can in your melting heart pose. After your third breath, very carefully walk it back in a bit and then watch for a moment. So we're going to kind of do a hybrid of thread the needle and melting heart. So I'm going to give you two versions. One is a little less um, deep. So you'll start out there. If you want to go further, you're going to go further. So take your left forearm and put it down on the ground and it's going to be parallel to the top of your mat. Your other arm is going to reach forward. And you could put your forehead on the arm. So that's stage one. You might feel a bit of opening and through the shoulder and through the chest. If you wanna go farther, you're gonna slide that left arm across, put your head on the ground and reach your other arm overhead. So left arm kind of slides through and right arm is reaching straight overhead. And what this does is it opens a bit into the back of the heart. So you'll send your breath there into the back of the heart. If that's too intense, go back to the first variation. So just a couple more breaths here. And then when you're ready, you're going to slide that right hand back, press into your palm, and carefully come back up to start. Okay, let's try the other side. The right forearm comes down. The left arm reaches forward. You could stay there. Or thread that arm through. Head can come to the floor. Turning your head to the side. You might also need a little pillow under the head and then a couple of breaths there. So all these different yoga poses that we do also open up the meridian pathway. So the energy flows to these pathways in the body and sometimes we get stagnant energy and then the energy is blocked, especially if we have stress, heartache, pain, those things will start to block the energy. So when we do yoga, it helps to open those pathways back up so that energy can flow through our heart space or whatever area we're working on.
Slowly, slowly release, come back to the center. And this time let's move back into a full child's pose and let your heart go toward the ground. Arms could be in front of you or stacked under your forehead. And let's take about three cycles of breath there. Okay, so after that third breath, take your time and we're going to go ahead and slowly walk those hands back in and we'll get ready for our first restorative posture. We're going to need our two bed pillows or a yoga bolster. And we're going to put a blanket behind those pillows. And I just am using that same trifold blanket that we used earlier under our shoulder blades. You might also want something under your knees. So I'm gonna grab another blanket and you can use a pillow as well for underneath the backs of the knees. Okay, so this is a nice um, restorative heart opener. So I'm gonna kind of press the pillows or the bolster down to help me lift my chest up first. So we don't wanna come back without creating that nice length. Then start to come back and feel like you're lengthening the whole time and then bring your head onto that um, folded blanket. Now, if your head feels like it's dropping too much, simply take that folded trifle blanket and fold it in half again. And then you won't feel like that head's dropping quite so far. So some of us, depending on the height of our pillows, the length of our torso, we might not need more there. Totally up to you. Now arms, couple ideas. You could take them overhead and that really opens up that whole side body heart space. You could take them out to the side, a little more gentle, or you could simply rest them on your belly because you're still getting this nice heart opening here. So it's like a little back bend. So decide what feels good. Sometimes I even like clasp my elbows overhead. And we're gonna stay here for a few minutes. Maybe like five minutes. So make sure that you make any last adjustments so you feel really comfy. And as we hold the restorative postures, I'm gonna share some different little readings with you. And I'm gonna to read to you from one of my favorite authors, Jeff Foster tonight, because he writes a lot about the emotions and the heart. So just continue to settle in there. So this one is called Healing, Trust the Process. Sometimes you have to feel worse in order to feel better. Sometimes you have to lose hope of ever getting better, and then you start to feel better. Sometimes healing involves, sometimes healing involves staying very present as powerful waves of energy move in the body. Sometimes the body shakes, convulses, shivers, aches, sweats, burns, as it rids itself of toxins, releasing bound up tension. The mind says I'm getting worse, but the heart knows you are okay. True healing is not the removal of surface symptoms, but courage and trust of the body, connection with the breath, and knowing that symptoms may intensify before they disappear. And they may never disappear. And yet you may fall in love with yourself as you are, despite the future. And you may drop to your knees in gratitude for you have been given another day on this precious earth. Maybe getting worse was the best thing that ever happened to you because you've never sensed the presence of love so clearly and your path has never been more obvious and you've never felt so alive. 
So I'm going to give you another minute or two here. And continue to feel your back body dropping into the props. Feel free to change your arm position if you get like tingles and your arms start falling asleep. So take care of yourself, listen to your body. Last minute here, another aspect of the heart chakra is vulnerability. So when we experience long-term stress, trauma, heartache, threat, we tend to close off the heart space. And we develop like an internal body armor in that the fascia is tightening and trying to protect our heart space. We get tightness there. And that's all part of that mind-body connection. But to kind of start to release that armor can feel very challenging. We might feel very vulnerable when we start to let go of that armor because we're so accustomed to it being there, protecting us. And as we start to melt that armor through things like yoga, oftentimes emotion will come up. I know many of you have heard me say this before, but, you know, well over 20 years ago when I started practicing yoga, I would literally cry when I did certain poses because I had so much tension in my body from um, trauma of growing up. And I kept doing it, even though it was painful, even though it was challenging and just made me have that sense of vulnerability. But it is important work very important work to allow ourselves to open up, not only for our physical benefit, but for our mental emotional benefit as well. Last three breaths in this position. And after your third breath, we're going to slowly start to come out. So if your legs are out, you might want to bend your knees. You could slide forward or you could roll to your side, see what feels best for you. But then take a pause on your side when you get over there. And we don't want to pop up out of these postures. We're going to take our time. And after a brief pause on your side, really take your time, use your arm strength, bring your head up last, and we'll set up for the next posture. So we're gonna continue with heart opening, but this time we're gonna take it in an inversion. So we're gonna grab two yoga blocks and we're gonna make them into a little stand for our hips. So I'm gonna take these two yoga blocks and put them together the long way. So it almost gonna make like a little square, a little rectangle. We're gonna put that kind of midway on your mat. And then on top of that, you could either put a bed pillow or um, a folded up blanket. So it's a little softer. Okay. And then we're gonna come and kind of bring our hips up on it. So you can put your legs over it and scoot your hips up and then come down. So before we bring our legs up, so it's almost like legs up the wall, but we're not at a wall. Before we do that, I want you to lift your hips and kind of slide your tailbone toward your feet. So you feel a little more open in your lower back. So sometimes this can get pinchy. 
So I'm gonna feel like the lower back is nice and spacious. And then we're gonna tuck our shoulder blades in towards each other till you feel the chest really open and lift, and then the arms could relax. So you wanna really bring those shoulder blades towards each other. So they're like a little scaffolding for the heart space. And then when you're ready, you can bring your knees in towards your chest and take your legs up. Now, if you don't like the legs up, you certainly could keep feet down, but the inversion is really beneficial for our heart. When we take this supported kind of restorative inversion, um, it takes a little bit of the pressure off the heart because the heart's not having to pump all the way through our whole body right now. Blood flow is coming, uh, the fluid and the blood flow from our legs toward our heart. And we get this sort of inverted position that helps calm the heart. These types of positions are also said to help lower blood pressure. So if we have a lot of that fiery energy, uh, anger coming up, we might take a position like this to help calm and soothe the heart. Certainly we could do it with the legs right at the wall as well. So we're just gonna stay here, soft breath. I'm gonna come down and share another one of the readings with you guys. All right. So this one is called the courage to heal. A lot of these are about healing. And again, courage associated with the heart. Healing does not always look good or feel good, pretty or kind. True healing nearly always involves the reopening of old wounds, the death of illusion, and a courageous confrontation with our pain. One of the most unhelpful myths we have inherited from our culture is that healing is supposed to feel good. Not always. Sometimes our discomfort actually intensifies as the darkness emerges into the light. As unconscious material makes its way into our awareness, as our old illusions burn up, pain is not wrong, a mistake, or a sign that we are doomed. Pain may actually indicate that our healing process is intensifying, not stalling, and that we are actually more awake and sensitive than ever, more deeply connected with the here and now, and less willing to look away. There is such a tendency in our culture to avoid discomfort of any kind, to distract ourselves from it, label it as wrong or unspiritual, even meditate it away. Much of our Western medicine is geared toward the removal of symptoms, the silencing of disruption, the numbing of chaos, and the journey towards some socially acceptable sense of normality. But sometimes, friend, we no longer have any interest in returning to normal. The normal was the problem, not the solution. The status quo needed to shift. It was unstable and false. Old dreams were keeping us trapped and limited. I'm gonna give you the option now, if you wish to bring your feet to the ground, we're gonna hold for one more minute. If you're happy with legs up, keep them up. If you need the breast, take the feet down. And this also speaks to me of sometimes we talk about returning to normal with the pandemic and how normal maybe wasn't working for us. So this is bringing that up as well. So sometimes our normality needs to break open into chaos and crisis. Our pain, sorrow, frustration, exhaustion, doubts need to be felt more fully than ever before. The heart needs to break open more completely. Our pain is not a punishment from a judgmental God, nor a mistake in a broken universe, nor evidence of our failure, but a profoundly alive spiritual teaching. Witness Jesus on the cross, the device of his torture, his 
became his ultimate invitation to healing, the rediscovery of his own unbreakable presence prior to his human incarnation, prior to time itself. Consider the possibility that within your suffering, you are being given an invitation to let go, to wake up from the dream of normality, to embrace life and all its brokenness and wonder, to fall in love where you are, to come out of the story of the past and future and turn, turn toward the present moment. Let the winds blow, let the tempest rage, let all that is false be purified. Let all that is dead remain dead. Let life explode where you are. You are only being invited to a deeper healing, even though it feels like pain, even though the heart is tender and raw, even though you cannot yet feel your tomorrow. All right. So when you're ready, if your legs are still up, very slowly start to bring them back down to the ground. Set the feet down for a moment, knees bent. Just take a couple more breaths now with the feet down if you haven't brought them down yet. All right, when you're ready, you're gonna go ahead and you can either kind of roll to your side, you can slide the block out, make your way up so we can set up for uh, another set of poses. Okay, so you're gonna grab one of those bed pillows. Uh, yoga bolster would work if you have one of the thinner ones. If you have a really thick yoga bolster, I would recommend using a pillow instead or maybe a trifle blanket or two. This is gonna go under your hips again. And then you might want a little something for under your head. So I'm using just a little square pillow for the head. And then off to the side, you're gonna keep one more pillow, or maybe your second bed pillow, or you could also use a rolled up blanket here. So you just improvise with whatever you have around. We're gonna do a twist. So twists are getting into the area of the rib cage and the heart area as well. So let me show you guys this one. I'm gonna sit onto this first pillow. And if you feel like your pillow is really squishy, maybe put a second pillow or even an extra blanket on top so it lifts you up a little bit. I want you to feel a little elevated in your hips, which gives you a tiny bit of a back bend in this pose. Okay, once you're down, you wanna make sure that this is low down under your sacrum. We're gonna cross the legs. So I'm gonna take, the pillow's gonna be over to my left side. I'm gonna cross my right leg over my left leg. No space. And then let the hip shift a little bit toward the right side of your pillow and let your knees drop over to the left. You're gonna bring that second pillow underneath the knees. And then pause for a second. Pull your left shoulder blade to the left, which opens your heart space a little more. Now take the arms either out to a T or your right arm can go by your ear over your head and let your head turn over towards your left. So that opens up the rib cage shoulder girdle a bit more. And then we're just gonna stay there. Another couple of minutes breathing here. So just a little gentle space, creating space into the area of the rib cage, maybe into the heart space a bit. All right, so we're gonna take a couple minutes on each side. Since we're doing two sides, we're gonna just do a shorter hole. We'll do three minutes per side.
Okay. This is called the gateway of sorrow. So as we mentioned before, heart chakra can be associated with things like depression and sadness and grief. Sometimes it's okay to just feel sad without knowing why you're feeling sad or how the sadness got there or worrying about how long it will stay. It's okay to feel sad without trying not to feel sad, without judging yourself at all. Feel directly the raw energy in the body without naming it. Feel the tenderness in the chest, the lump in the throat, the shaky feeling in your belly. Don't resist the energy and don't worry about any resistance. Allow the energy to move, to grow bigger if it needs to, to release itself in its own time. Be patient with sadness. Let it come closer. Let it engulf you if it must. Until there is no division between self and sadness. Until you cannot call it sadness at all. Until there is only intimacy. Be the embrace of sadness. It's loving parent. It's home. It's protection. Your sadness keeps you soft and flexible. It reminds you when you have forgotten of the beautiful fragility underneath all things. It is the softness of the heart. It is in the softness of the heart lies the capacity to love. Sadness is not the opposite of joy, but her gateway. One of the things I really love about Jeff Foster is that he really encourages us to make space for all these emotions and not push them away. We talk a lot about spiritual bypassing in yoga. So sometimes we can just put on those rosy colored glasses too much and forget that sadness is part of us. Maybe um, all these emotions, even anger, they all serve a purpose. Rather than push them away, we can befriend them and understand them and help us to grow. So we're going to now take an inhale and an exhale, and we're going to make our way back to center. Take your time. Try not to move quickly. And we're going to switch that pillow to the other side. When you're ready, crossing the left leg on top. Shift your hips over to the left and then bring that pillow in under your legs, drop the knees over to the right. And then decide on your arm position. Maybe you want a more open, expansive. Maybe you wanna take that arm over your ear, next to your ear, getting more length on the side body, whichever one feels better. And then we'll take another three minutes here. In the first couple moments, just really letting those shoulders drop, maybe pulling that right shoulder blade a little bit to the right to get your chest more level, more open. Make any adjustments. Come to your nice, soft, soft breath. Where that soft breath in the belly is going to be more calming for our system. It's going to be more activating for our vagal nerve, vagus nerve, and that helps calm our heart space, calms the heart energy. So there's always a constant communication between our body and our mind. And again, that can get kind of gunked up, kind of blocked off. But the more we soften and let go of that body armor, the signal from the body to the brain is gonna be like, okay, everything's good. I can relax. But when we feel that tension and that signal to the brain is gonna be like, something's wrong here. I don't feel safe. But 
with the breath, you create the environment in your body for health, for wellness, for safety, for calm, and even for rest, for sleep. Like the more um, agitated we are in our heart, you can look at this through our Chinese medicine studies that some of you have been doing with me. Um, the energy of the heart really relates a lot to our anxiety. So when the heart is really agitated, heart energy is really activated. We're not going to be able to sleep. Um, we're not going to be able to sit still. We're not going to be able to be calm. So the soft breath is really the key. And that's, I'm learning that more and more. The soft breath is uh, magic, magic. Okay, another reading, how to be happy now. So we're going to change it up a little bit. So don't try to be happy even. You'll make yourself unhappy by trying. You'll compare your present experience with the mind secondhand version of happiness. And you'll go to war with any unhappiness in yourself, splitting yourself in two, and you'll feel far from happy. True happiness is in the absence of trying to be happy, trying to live up to some outdated secondhand image of happiness. It's an invitation to be whole, grounded, present, right where you are. Happiness is not a goal then or a destination or final place, not even a state. It cannot be given and it cannot be taken away. It is a field, a great field in which joy and sorrow and excitement and boredom, loneliness, doubt, and a profound sense of connection, anger, fear, uncertainty are all allowed to play, to dance, to grow in their own precious time. All thoughts are welcome, positive and negative. Sounds both pleasant and unpleasant can come and go too. Happiness is vast. It is meditation, a great space. It is loving attention slowness, rest. It is the breath moving in and moving out. It is the sense of being alive. It has no opposite for it embraces all. And it is your nature, not some far off utopia. It is you before you were named, before you learned to doubt yourself. Don't try to be happy then. Embrace your unhappiness, let it live, offer it asylum and sanctuary, and you will know a deeper happiness known as love. Go ahead and take one more full breath here. When you're ready, Go ahead and make your way back to the center and then uncross your legs. Give your knees a hug into your chest. If you want to pull the pillow out, you can. You can leave it there. Rock a little side to side. Give yourself a good hug. And then we're at Shavasana time already, guys. So um, I'm going to recommend... Um, a position, but you are welcome to take any position that you like. So I'm going to take the two pillows or a yoga bolster. And if you have the two pillows, you might stack them on top of each other and put the top one a little bit closer to the ground. So you almost like a staircase. The top one is on the ground, bottom one. Well, they're both on the ground, but the top one just now instead of being right on top, pull it down a little bit. And then we're gonna take a square pillow or a folded blanket for your head. So it just gives us a little elevation here. And then something under your knees. And if you are cold tonight, make sure you cover yourself up. If you got weighted items, you can put a sandbag or a weighted blanket over you, eye pillow. Get yourself really cozy for your Shavasana. So we can recline back and we have this little elevation again in our chest. Arms can be out to the side or on your body. And we'll do a guided meditation in our Shavasana. 
So we're going to spend, uh, we're going to end maybe, I don't know, five minutes late. I hope that's okay with you guys. Maybe like seven minutes late. So we took a lot of time chatting. So I'm going to finish with a little guided meditation and Shavasana. And then we're going to finish with one more seated uh, practice as well. So I'm going to give you guys another moment just to get settled. Once you find yourself settled, just be aware of the ground beneath you, holding you, supporting you, so that you can really relax into it. And as you let your back body melt into the ground, we'll feel more open and spacious in the heart. Come into noticing again your breath as it massages the heart space. Following the inhale through the nose, through a soft throat, into a soft heart, into a soft belly, all the way to the pelvic floor. And then follow it back out, long, smooth exhalation. Now come to visualize a point of light in the center of your heart. Visualize it, maybe notice if it has a color, if it sparkles, if it shimmers. Does it glow? Notice and get really intimate with a visual of a light in your heart. Yogis talk about light in the heart. Even sometimes we say the word namaste. I've heard the interpretation of that, meaning the light in me honors the light in you. Really have an awareness of a presence of a light in your heart. And on your next inhale, imagine that light expanding, lighting up the whole heart space. And as you exhale, that light might recede a little bit back into your heart. Try that a few rounds as you inhale. Imagine that light growing, expanding the heart space, clearing it, clearing out any darkness, any cobwebs in the heart. Exhale, it softens back. Continue with that visual. Each inhale, imagine that light expanding in all directions around your heart so that it's three dimensional. So it's not just expanding kind of horizontally, vertically, maybe even it's expanding in front of you and back of you, diagonally. So visualize that light standing in all directions on the inhale. Having a sense that this light is healing, calming, rejuvenating. Sensing again any color to this light. Is it a golden light, a silvery light, like a flame? Is it like the sun? Whatever is meaningful to you.
Allow that light to expand a little bit farther. Maybe imagine that light expanding more up toward the crown of the head, down toward your navel center, out toward the sides of your body. Yogis sometimes say that the inner light of the heart lights up our light of awareness, leads us to clearer thinking, leads us to more wisdom. Allow well, that heart light to expand, to light up the mind. Soon imagining that light expanding into every cell of your body. The subtle expansion, contraction, that light originating in your heart center. And you can imagine your whole body filled with this light. Maybe it even expands into the spaces around you, like a pulsation of light. Allowing your body to feel lighter, to feel more expansive, feeling more open, open-hearted awareness open to all things, all emotions, all experiences, knowing that everything that has happened to us helps us to be who we are. And we can either take those lessons and hold on to them begrudgingly, or we can allow them to help us grow, to help others to share. We share that light with others, it helps us to increase our own light. And eventually you can let go of the light meditation and simply be here for a couple more moments just experiencing uh, the after effect of that meditation. Okay, so take the next couple of moments just to come back to awareness. Feel your body on the ground. Notice the effects of your practice. And then taking all the time you need to start some smaller movements, some deeper breaths. Taking your time. 
So maybe stretch it out when you are ready. And then before you come up to sit, take your time to come onto your side. And pause there, resting your head on your arm, little fetal position for a few cycles of breath. And then take your time. Come on up to sit as you're ready. Find a comfortable position, maybe a blanket on your lap or over your shoulders. And we're gonna do one more uh, brief seated practice. And this is for untying knots in the heart. So the yogis talk about different places where we hold knots. We have a knot in our belly, a knot in our heart, maybe a knot in our third eye. There's different places we hold them. And this is for kind of untying those knots and things that connect us to things that maybe we wanna kind of release those ties. So take a moment to get settled, sit on the tops of your sit bones, shoulders back, heart space open. And either closing your eyes or find a soft gazing point. So one of the other topics of heart chakra that we didn't really touch upon yet is that of kind of codependency. And that's when our heart is too much relying on outside sources to make us feel complete. So we might look to our partners or our jobs or children, whatever it might be to complete us. But then when those things get taken away or don't do what we want them to, then we, we feel bad. So that's codependency. So you wanna be able to have that sense of fulfillment without having those ties. Not that we can't have those connections, but we don't want to have them be the only source of our support. So getting comfortable coming into your breath. Your eyes either be soft or closed lightly. And start to visualize your heart space as a jumbled mass of threads that represent your emotions. And as you look closely, become aware of those threads that represent negative feelings, such as old hurts that you are holding onto or grief that you have been unable to process. Check whether some of those threads are now attached to people who have come and gone from your life to experiences that are now over or objects that once caused you pain but no longer do. If your heartstrings are still attached to these people and experiences and objects, decide to disengage yourself from them now. Picture yourself untying the knots one by one letting go of their painful memories. Notice as you work on one knot, how the other threads occasionally become looser and then begin to unravel. Some threads may not even require you to untie them at all. They may just start to fall away on their own accord. As the knots release, feel yourself becoming more relaxed. Sense that you are mentally and physically less tied up in knots. In place of the previous tangle, you may begin to see a more simple, positive pattern emerging in your heart. Repeat this visualization as many times as is useful and come back to it whenever you feel particularly tense, tied up in knots, or grief bound. So hopefully your heart feels a little more open, a little lighter after your practice this evening. Let's go ahead, bring the hands together right in front of the heart space. And we're gonna take a nice inhalation, allowing the heart to lift. And as you exhale, bow your head down to meet your heart. 
And thank you so much, everyone. Namaste.